The idea behind a herbarium specimen is a very simple one. It's a piece of dried plant with a label containing information about it, and the two are attached to a piece of card. So this plant was growing, collected, growing in the wild in its natural habitat and brought here to Edinburgh with the information on the label. And the beauty of having this specimen here in Edinburgh is that for a scientist, almost all the information that they could get from standing in front of that plant and observing it is available here in this room. Okay, these are my collections from Thailand that I made earlier this year. They've arrived in Edinburgh and I'm trying to get a better identification on them. I've got it to genus at the moment, but I think this is a genus that you're an expert in, Barbara, so I'd value your opinion. Ah yes, that does look like chrysophyllum to me. To be absolutely certain though, I would need a cross-section of a fruit. And Peter's an experienced collector, as you can see the cross-section here, the seeds in the correct orientation, and when they detach, they leave a scar, which is characteristic of the genus. I also have access to the fantastic collections here, which I can compare to this chrysophyllum and help confirm the identification as chrysophyllum canito. So with every collection here we make at Edinburgh, we collect a little bit of dried leaf. That leaf is then made into a DNA collection, which is used to understand relationships between organisms that allows us to do better taxonomy. After sorting and naming, specimens for the Edinburgh Herbarium were sent for mounting. The aim of mounting is to produce herbarium specimens which display important plant characteristics in an aesthetically pleasing way, but they also have to be robust enough to withstand repeated handling so they remain accessible to future researchers in years to come. Mounters decide how to arrange the pressed plant and select a sample of loose material for the capsule and use archival materials to glue tape and stitch the plant specimen onto the supportive mounting board. Managing a herbarium of three million specimens needs a system to make it easy to lay specimens away in the cabinets and to retrieve them for research. Up to 30,000 specimens come into the herbarium each year and these all need to be databased, imaged and laid away. We are working here hard to database and image all three million specimens to make them more accessible to people here in Scotland and across the world. So the first stage in the monographic research project is to do a specimen sort where we lay out all the specimens in the family or genus we're interested in and take a fresh look at what we think our species. Then we look at these groups of specimens in light of relevant literature, reference specimens and apply the names that we, we think best apply to these specimen piles. And then also we can figure out if we have any new species and describe them. Cryptogams, lichens, mosses, fungi, these are relatively poorly studied, but here in Edinburgh we have an expertly identified set of specimens numbering in the hundreds of thousands. We use these to create a database of what we call barcodes, DNA barcodes. So we'll take a specimen that's been identified we'll, and we'll get a tiny piece of its DNA that's unique to it. It's a unique identifier, just like the stripes you find on a package in a grocery store. What that means is we end up with a specimen expertly identified, forever linked with a short signature sequence that's deposited in an international database and that DNA barcode is a very valuable resource tied to the herbarium.
I've been using the Scottish collection to help me identify lichens that I've collected in the field. A lot of these can be quite small and often look quite similar to one another, so it's really fantastic having the herbarium as a resource to help me um, making my identifications. The research I'm involved with is looking at lichens in woodlands throughout Scotland and we're interested in looking at the effects of climate change um, and pollution as well to see how these communities of lichens might respond to this in the future. Herbaria like this one and the scientific research that uses these collections are as active and relevant today as they have always been. Perhaps even more so now as the biodiversity that we are studying are facing unprecedented levels of threat. We can only effectively conserve what we know and understand and there is still a lot of work to be done, particularly in the species rich and generally resource poor tropical regions. These amazing collections spanning hundreds of years are undoubtedly of great historical and cultural interest, but they are primarily a vital resource at the cutting edge of biodiversity science and conservation.